Hello, welcome back to Real Fishing 2, the walkthrough. We are going after sea bass today. That's right, sea bass. We're going to learn a little bit about the sea bass fishing spot. Uh, this is on the salt water section of the uh, level arrangement of this game. I'll let you read the interestingly localized uh, text here about this, this area. I like that we use lure fishing, which gives it an urban feel. So this is uh, technically listed as stage 3. Uh, this, the way the stages are numbered is a little bit uh, interesting here. Stage 1 and 2 are the first freshwater and the first saltwater area, but then once you advance through the freshwater, you go from stage 2 to stage 9, and then 10, 11, 12. The saltwater um, stages go 1, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, and then it mix, uh, meets back up. Very interesting. So here we are heading from the, uh, the Aqua Lodge. <laughs> The meeting place for all great uh, anglers in this game. There's our Wellington boots. We're going to go out here into what it looks like a forest meadow. And we are going to pop up here in the uh, in the city with this, this urban feel. So we are fishing at night. Um, so the palette here is quite dark, quite blue. And uh, it, we're just here at a big city, it looks like. Fishing for sea bass. We are using kind of a crankbait lure in this level, so the hooking is not going to be dangling live bait around the, the bottom. We are just going to be pulling this crankbait in. As in uh, most real fishing games, the, the tricky part about figuring out a new fish is when to set the hook, learning when to set the hook. Sea bass are a, uh, a very fast, very early set, so you need to set the hook as soon as that fish grabs the lure. If you wait too long, um, you'll pull it out of their mouth, so it, it's a quick set. Some fish you need to wait a little bit longer to, so that they have it uh, deeper in their mouth, and uh, this one, we're not. Hearing the, uh, the higher-pitched uh, flop of this fish as it goes tells me that it's not going to be the fish that's going to advance us. We need to catch a fish that is two feet or more. Uh, this one is 1.14 feet, so it's not given in feet and inches. It's given in feet and hundredths of feet. Yes, I know that's very strange. Uh, although the description uh, of this level told us a hint, we want to catch a sea bass larger than it said 24 inches. So this is another um, higher pitched flop. We'll hear the lower pitched flop from the bigger fish that's coming up here soon. But uh, that tells me that it's not going to be one of the keepers. I don't know if that rule is going to apply all the way through this game, uh, where a fish that's uh, larger than a cutoff of some kind is going to make a different sound. But if you play this on the with a dual shock controller, as I would highly recommend, uh, you can actually feel the difference between uh, fish of that larger size and uh, these smaller fish too in the uh, the rumble of your controller. So when fish are running, uh, it does trigger the rumble. And on the bigger fish, the, the rumble is actually almost <laughs> gives your, uh, your hand some numbness. So sometimes you might want to turn that off if you're playing for an extended period. So you can see this one is, is 1.88, very close to that two, uh, two foot cutoff that we're looking for. And uh, again, it, it didn't quite have the same sound as the bigger fish and it didn't have the same um, feel on the, on the rumble pack. It's actually not a rumble pack on the old dual shocks, but. So this is a, actually a pretty straightforward level. Some of the levels in this game have multiple requirements where you need to catch uh, multiple species or multiple species of a different size. So there is the lower pitched sound. You can hear it. I hope you can hear that it's a lower pitch. So my strategy in fighting this fish, which is uh, which could be a uh, day winner or a level advancer fish, <laughs> uh, I'm trying to loosen my drag while the fish is fighting and uh, tighten the drag when the fish is a little bit more tired. But as you can see, um, I was not able to pull it out there. Now, a lot of things in fishing games, if I found especially, is that manuals often give you conflicting or unreliable information. Uh, on fighting fish and abstracting the the fighting of a fish is a uh, it would be a difficult thing to do to, to turn that activity and make it work in a video game would not be an easy task so i certainly don't blame the developers from natsume or from hot b who makes uh, like the black bass and blue marlin series of games i wouldn't um, want to throw them under the bus for finding ways to to abstract that here's another smaller one um, but what I'm looking at here is is as a fish is doing its um, its body turn. So we haven't really seen it yet. There's a nice uh, little tail walk there. 
When they do their body turn, right there, there was one of them. If they can pull off three of those in a row, they will drop your lure. They'll, they'll drop the hook and, and get off. You can pull them out of that by moving your rod, by manipulating your rod left, right, down, um, so swinging your rod. Uh, sometimes you can pull fish out of it after one, sometimes it's two, but if they get to three, then they're going to get off. And a lot of the bigger sea bass that I failed to land uh, before we have a successful one here in a few minutes would have a... Uh, so here's another larger one. Would have a time where they'll just pull off three of those and there was just nothing I could do. I swung, I swung the rod, I hit that. I don't know if there's frame windows or a bit of an RNG factor in pulling them out of that. Um, and, and the RNG uh, windows are smaller on bigger fish. I don't actually know what those uh, the underlying mechanics are. Because the uh, manuals often aren't very helpful. They'll give you pretty vague advice. Um, things like this from the manual of this game. As you become more experienced, you will begin to see that you have a fair amount of control over a struggling fish through minor adjustments to the fishing pole. With slight pole action, you can often guide a fish towards the direction you're reeling. There's a misspell on your. During a long fight, this can keep a fish from running out too far and snapping your line. Avoid moving your pole too much if the fish has a good head of steam built up. But if you're not using moving your rod at all, this is back to me, end quote, I should have said. If you're not moving your rod at all, the fish will just pull off. They'll pull off three of those in a row. So you have to be swinging the rod on the bigger fish during those runs, trying to uh, turn them. But I don't know if there are some fish that um, the game just, uh, your RNG doesn't line up and the game says, nope, not going to catch this one. Also, looking at this, um, this level, and a lot of levels in many fishing games, actually, there may be an invisible counter that that ticks up that um, fish of a game or a day winning size will not start biting until you have caught a certain number of fish which would be a logical thing to put in these games it's not listed in the manual of course and i can't uh, explore the uh, mechanics of this game um, from a mechanical standpoint from the algorithms guide which is not available but it would stand to reason that a game would have a counter of say 10 fish or something before uh, it started having fish of a certain size start biting. Because when I first started this level, I wasn't getting any bites from fish that were large enough to win this day. But once I had played for about a half an hour, it seemed like every every third fish, every fourth fish, um, and then eventually here today, I've got uh, quite a few are the larger size. So the game does reward you for practicing and getting better on the smaller fish, and then starts to give you more uh, fish that will advance you as you go through. So I don't know if that applies for other RNG elements of this game. If they start to line up more in your favor, the longer you play, that would be a kind thing for this game to do. That would be a very player friendly thing for them to have put in. 1.67 feet. So still short of that two foot mark. Uh, we actually are getting pretty close to the end of the fishing day. So yeah, there is a timer in here and you do have about 10 real world minutes in each level before your uh, your day time runs out or in this case before your night time runs out so this is um, the lower pitched sound and which tells me this is probably one of those day winners uh, and also this one had the uh, the deeper rumbling of the dual shock controller so if we can pull this one in things are looking good And in this one, you can hear I'm, I'm letting the reel go as it gets to the edge, as it gets to the far sides. That puts some strain on your line, and they can snap your line on the ends like that. So just as they pull to the edge, I've been letting go of the line. I'm not playing with the drag much on this, uh, on this fish. I wasn't really getting a good feel of changing the drag. I wasn't feeling much different, so I don't know what... Um, what the mechanics are here and I hooked him or I landed him in a very odd position but here we go there is the jingle that tells me that this fish is advancing me so real fishing one also had a different jingle so in the saltwater venue we are going on to sea bream <laughs> 